I believe education needs to hit towards behavior, and one of the best ways to work on behavior, as uh, I've heard many times, is working with young people, students, very young students, and sometimes these students actually educate their parents as well. And in the behavior, it's not just focusing on what commodity, what product, what low value resource, it's a whole ethic of not wasting. It's funny to me that there are some people that feel it's okay to throw out the cigarette butt on the ground, but it's not okay to throw out uh, an empty sugar packet. And why? It needs to be a total behavior, not just focused on a particular product. I think it needs to start young. Uh, the type of materials we have change over time, and how we manage those may change as well. So it's a whole ethic of stewardship of all our low-value resources and so I think starting at a young age, there's some great programs out there. I recently heard of Landfill Camp, which is one of the things I just thought was, was just kind of neat. It's a day camp to work with children about uh, environmental and solid waste related issues. Uh, and that's just kind of a, a neat idea that I hadn't heard of until recently. I'd, I'd like to, I, I would agree with that, but I'm also a big fan of um, education through the design and, of the built environment. So, um, have, tying education not to just abstract information or even information that is conveyed on paper or electronically, but um, linking it to the um, consistent provision of receptacles, signage on those receptacles, um, and clearly um, identifiable receptacles so that you have this constant physical material reminder and educator um, that is reinforcing your recycling behavior. And in my experience, um, I have seen some of the, the most you know, well-intentioned educational materials fall down because somebody fails to put a, a, a trash receptacle next to the recycling bin in a public place and you know there there isn't this kind of um, physical reinforcement of the options that you have for source separation that's that's just one example well leading off what um, Samantha just said I think that a bad recycling system in a public space is such a negative uh, education point because it basically says to users that this is not a really big deal uh, and that these it, it can look like window dressing instead of a key part of the building as important as the the ramps and the water fountains is the trash management system except oh then here's this bin I guess maybe and you, you see a bad recycling bin you can't help but wonder if what you put in there is actually going to get recycled and that just undermines the entire system and people's participation in it. And I, I would add also to that um, consistency, which in, in my travels I haven't really seen, but I understand, for example, in San Francisco that there's great consistency. So you don't have different setups and different um, forms of describing, you know, let's say bottles and cans in one place and metal and glass in another, you know. In New York City we have all this kind of ad hoc terminology that um, that businesses and other managers of public spaces are applying to, um, to describe the recycling infrastructure in place uh, in front of them. And, and, and a, a really exa good example of what not to do is here in the subway system uh, in New York City, which is administered in completely separately from other city government agencies, they have on their cans just they say throw everything in this can. We will sort it out later, and they do because the majority of uh, trash in that's discarded in the subway is newspapers um, and some cans. But they they it, this creates tremendous confusion for residents that don't understand why they're being told basically to throw everything in one receptacle underground, and then they go up to the street and they've got three bins for dual stream recycling and trash. Something I've seen recently, which maybe it's a little bit of civil disobedience, but I think it's uh, if it's adopted in a broader arena, it may be effective. In those public spaces that only have a waste receptacle, 
I've seen there the common recyclables are actually set on the ground around that waste receptacle because there wasn't a recycling container provided. If many people continue to do that, I think it will compel managers to put in a recycling receptacle adjacent to the waste receptacle. Otherwise, they've got to pick up the stuff on the ground and throw it out themselves or do an, an, an extra step to recycle it. Um, I think that's just something very interesting and maybe that will be adopted more places.